Well, friends, I got to tell you, I am searching for a balance between showing you this fast forward stuff and talking to you and all this. You know, it, it takes time to figure out what works. And your comments really let me know what you like to see best. So please observe the format of this video and let me know what you think. We're building an injection molding machine today, and it is kick-ass. Okay, so this tube here is my melting chamber, and uh, I need to create a place for the uh, plastic to be poured in, and the way I'm going to do that is just uh, use this two-flute end mill to bore a hole down into it at a 45-degree angle. And uh, um, let's see how that works. All right, so there's my 45 degree angle hole. I just need to deburr it a little bit. And that should be just fine. I'm gonna make a little funnel here outside it to channel the plastic pellets down inside the tube. One thing that's cool about being a maker and knowing other makers is sometimes one of your friends owns a laser cutter. I told one of my friends that I needed an enclosure for the electronics of this machine, and he sent me this, a stack of parts it's a laser cut box to hold the electronics. So the next thing I need to do is uh, put a flat end on this um, so I can interface with the, uh, with the lever. One way to do that would be just chuck it up in the mill and, and mill it off, but uh, you know, I need so little metal removed, I think I'm gonna just take a big file and do it. The file was taking too long, so I took it over to the oscillating belt sander, and that's what I ended up with, which is uh, just what I need. Now what I need to do is turn this down on the lathe so it'll fit into the melting chamber. I've got my barrel and I've got my piston. It fits inside the barrel. This is going to grow by five thousandths when I heat it. And um, yeah, the fit is pretty good. I asked my friend Harold over at the Amateur Redneck Workshop if I should uh, put a piston ring in here. He said that he cut a piston ring groove for his, but it just filled with plastic anyway. So uh, I'm going to rely on the length of the contact area, which is about uh, an inch and a half, to uh, seal the plastic to keep it from blowing back past the piston. Now the last thing I need to do is make the actual injector nozzle. And the way I'm going to put this thing together is I'm going to heat this up. We did an experiment and we know that this grows five thousandths of an inch when we heat it. And uh, I'm going to shrink this in dry ice and we're going to put the two together and they will be forever stuck. To make doubly sure they stick together, what I'll do is I'll drill a hole through the barrel into the nozzle and tap it with quarter 20 threads, which is the thread size for the thermocouple, which is the heat sensor.
Okay, so one thing I want to do is I want to dish this in a little bit. This is going to be the inside. Well, the camera battery died while I was while I was making it, but this is what I came up with. It's a 3 8 inch tip with a uh, the same angle as a 3 8 inch drill bit on the end. That way when we make the mold, we just drill a hole in it with a 3 8 inch drill bit and this should mate into it perfectly. Then it's got a little bit of a dish on the inside and I didn't turn it down any, I just polished it a little bit with some 400 grit sandpaper. So now, I need to freeze this and heat the barrel and press the two together. All right, that's it. I get one chance to do this. That is perfect. That is exactly what I was hoping for. Those two pieces are stuck. They are not going anywhere. That ain't going nowhere, but just to make sure, I'm gonna drill a hole into it and tap it for quarter 20 thread to accept this thermocouple. One thing I've decided to do is I'm going to center drill and tap the end of the piston and the reason I'm going to do that is because I think I want to put a, a silicone washer on the end of it to, uh, to sweep the inside of the barrel. So I cut that piston a little bit small and I probably shouldn't have um, but I think my solution is right here. I went over to the Walmart and got a four dollar silicone rubber spatula and I'm going to cut out a circle with my uh, circle cutting chisel thing. I don't know what they even call this. And, uh, and I'm going to screw that into the end. It seems uniform right there in the middle, right there in the meaty part where the handle was. I don't think I could ask for much better than that for a piston seal. Okay, this is where the rubber meets the road. Now I'm going to just fast forward through all this tedious assembly stuff because, you know, the fact of the matter is I put this thing together and took it back apart three or four times because uh, I put things in, in the wrong order and I needed spacers in places that I didn't have. So, you guys know how it goes. Here you can see how I had to fish all the wires through the openings in the box, wire it outside the box, and then slip all the components through the openings that uh, were going to be their final resting places. Time for the smoke test. Plug it in, see if it smokes. All right, it works. So there it is, and I gotta tell you, I feel really great about this. It's an injection molding machine for under $100. And I don't have any plastic, otherwise I'd even try it out and melt some plastic for you. The next step is going to be how to make molds and fill them up with molten plastic. Anyway, uh, 
This came together so fast and so nice. I've only been working on this thing for two weeks and I, I am just thrilled with the result. So stay tuned to see what I end up doing with this thing and a bunch of other really great projects I got lined up. So please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here if you want to see my last video and click over here if you want to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.